I knew this guy who once put his hand in one of those hand dryers. He was always inquisitive. He was curious about everything. I once saw him take apart a toaster. There's actually more pieces in a toaster than you imagine. So anyway, he lost his hand right up to the wrist. It was his watch hand too. Why do you keep making up these stories? That's totally fictitious. I just can't go over your line. Why can't that be true? They don't make hand dryers that way anymore. Haven't for years, they've got grills. Also, if you had a friend with a severed hand, I would have noticed. It wasn't severed. It got so mangled, it had to be removed. It says to you in the, uh, in the 70s they used to give uh, cocaine as tips at restaurants. Do you remember that time we caught that chicken that fell off that building? No. I can't remember that at all. Do you remember that time that they made that TV show of our lives and asked us to star in it? There's just no plot. It's like the director's trying to fill time. We threw our money away. Heads are gonna roll. I'm reading, will you just leave me alone with your silly stories? You're like a big baby. What are you reading? It's just, it's a book about Scorsese and Copeland and all of them in the 70s making movies. <laughs> you still think someone's gonna buy your film scripts, don't you? You're crazy. You never even read any of my work. Lots of people like my stories. Who? Name me one. Okay, uh, Karen from next door. Karen. Karen from next door. Karen who I hate from next door. Why'd you hear? You never said that before. I hate her. With her reading. And her laugh. And her taking long baths and her smoking too much. How do you know she takes long baths? Who else has read your scripts? Uh, Darren. <laughs> Darren! Darren from next door to Karen. Darren with his reggae 45s, his testicular cancer, and his never blinking at all. Darren and Karen, that's all who've read your work. Yeah. Your scripts haven't even left this floor. Darren's got cancer? <laughs>